There was a, a quote by Winston Churchill. He returned to his hometown and he was expecting this really, really great speech and everybody was all excited. And the words was, never give up, never give up, never give up. And that was it. That's my message to these young people or whomever have a dream. Never give up. Never give up. Never, ever give up. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the show. Today, I'm super stoked to be live in studio with the man, the myth, the legend, Artis Gilmore. Artis, what's going on, man? Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, sir. Yeah, like that you're rocking those rings right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bubblegum machine ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I doubt that. I doubt that. Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> Just the yeah. Hall of Fame, yeah. yeah. So I want to a little bit of context here uh, for people who may not know the stellar career that you were able to accomplish with uh, the Bulls and everything you were able to, to do during your career. I want to rewind the clock, go back in time. Let's talk junior high artists, junior high. So, That's so what cool. was life like? Way back. Way back. <laughs> Looking back with some binoculars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, reflecting back in that time frame and what was, Took place. What was actually taking place in my life? It was, uh, you know, just the challenges as a family, you know, large family, and almost like that era, fifties, uh, uh, and 50, back in the fifties, the segregation, the issues that we experienced in the, in the country. So it, it was tough, very difficult. Developing as a as a young kid, yeah. you know, where, where in the country? Uh, northwest in the Panhandle of Florida. Okay, gotcha. Up gotcha. near Alabama and uh, uh, Georgia. Got it. Got it. And you said big family. Okay, well, what, what, yeah. Large family. Uh, nine. Nine, nine seven individual. Yeah. That's a large family. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, second, second oldest. Second oldest, okay. So being in a large family, Florida, 1950s, was basketball kind of the thing that always brought everybody together? Not really. Uh, basketball was the furthest thing from any of us uh, thoughts. Uh, it was about survival, just to, you know, find food my, for my father to find food and put on, on the table for the, for such a large family. Mm. What, what did, what did he do? Uh, actually it was a, uh, a, a senior citizen when I was born, you know, so. Really? When you yeah, were born? When I was born. And you were yeah. the second oldest? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so. That meant that my mother was much, much younger wow. than, than he. But, uh, uh, what, what, did, what did he do for a living? There was not much back. I mean, this was almost like during the Depression, even in the 50s. Yeah. There was no work available. I mean, you probably, when I was a kid, I had to work in the fields. And uh, that was uh, um, pretty challenging. Yeah. Pretty challenging. No kidding. Yeah. What? Uh, um, at what? At what point was sports something that started becoming more prevalent in your life? Well, uh, uh, later, I think you know. Just to give you this kind of perception of a perspective of what happened when I was twelve years old, I was I was twelve. And then when I turned 13, I was, then all of a sudden I'm aware of the 13 and the 14. But, uh, in those, in that area during that time, 12, that was it. <laughs> you know, my mother and father couldn't buy. So, I mean, I was like without, you know, shoes, any kind of a, a comfort. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're working from a very young age then. 
Yeah. Right. It was everybody in your family working from a young age, essentially, just to help put food on the table. Yeah, just uh, make things positive in, in, in the family. Yeah. yeah, right. Everybody. Yeah, you're right. Uh, all the young individuals that, except the, the youngest. Yeah. What, what effect do you think that had on you growing up and developing into an adult? Like having to work from a young age, instilling that work ethic really early on. Uh, it was about r- really stepping it up and and understanding that the challenges that you was going to, you know, experience during that growth period, and that's what I was able to able to accomplish by developing and gaining some some experience from that and and having that desire to want uh, to want to move move forward. And, and take on a number of the challenges that uh, I was able to accomplish. When, when did you start playing basketball? Uh, actually, when I was about uh, 14, 15 years old. Really? That was the first time you played? It really started to play, yes. Wow, okay. Yeah. When, uh, was this pre-growth spurt or post-growth spurt? Uh, s- sort of a mixture Okay. In so between. you're already pretty tall. Yeah. I but was, not tall, tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on. I, I remember when I was on the, uh, when I joined the team that uh, they just actually brought me along, just, you know, uh, the, the, the fire up the other fans uh, <laughs> because, you know, I was sitting on the, uh, on the bench with uh, actually not really sneakers, uh, tennis shoes, but Stinkers with a, a hole in the side of them, you know. Really? So, yeah. Uh, very interesting uh, times. Yeah, right. A lot of uh, a, a lot of perspective, I'm sure, that gave you in, in terms of in terms of what you would do for the rest of your life and how you were able to combat a lot of those things. Yeah, yes, and, and the most important thing recognizing the environment that my family grew up in and wanted to uh, uh, to create some positive experiences in, in their lives as well, especially yeah, no my kidding. parents, you know, what they experienced, what they went through with. Uh, yeah, it was real. It was real. It was real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at what point, at what point, like, at what point did you feel, and this could have, this could be when you were younger or in the last couple of years or in the last few decades, at what point did you feel like you were, that you had at least overcome some of those things inside of your own accomplishments, I guess, if that makes sense? Well, yeah, it absolutely makes sense you know, that you've always had challenges within challenges i mean it doesn't matter whether that's being competitive on the sports arena and the office space or uh in in the uh democratic process whatever it is <clears throat> raising your family uh meeting thinking about those challenges that was able to push you forward from those earlier uh uh, earlier experiences yeah. as a kid growing up. So coming into your basketball career, how old were you when you thought I can actually make it to play this game professionally? Uh, I would hate to use the term doubt, but not feeling comfortable until we played, I, I actually played, started off, I played, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, junior college basketball first, oh, and really? then okay. transferred to a four-year school, which was in Jacksonville, Jacksonville <clears throat> University in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's when you thought, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this game, or yeah. at least I have a chance of playing this for some period beyond college even. Yeah, we were talking about the technology and, and just back in those days they had three networks and we was able to 
We were able to compete for a national championship. We played against UCLA and lost. And that was huge for my university and that, and that during that time frame. Yeah, yeah. So this was, what, what, what year did you get drafted? I was drafted in 1972. 1972. So you start playing in the league 1972. This was uh, uh, in Chicago, correct? No, no. Actually, the league's... Uh was separate. It was the ABA and the oh, NBA. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I I went to uh, the, made a decision to go to the ABA, okay. which was in Kentucky. Okay. Got it. Got it. Now, when you were playing basketball, things were a little bit different than they are now. What do you view as, I don't know, some of like maybe positive or negative things that have happened within the sport itself professionally? Like, right, because you've been able to watch the game develop from, you know, from yeah. being ABA, NBA, <clears throat> merger, and now what it is today in 2020s. You know, Just an incredible evolutionary process to watch the, the game <laughs> evolve into what it is today. Uh, I was thinking back uh, when... Bob Cousy and uh, Bill Russell and the two-handed set shot, basically. And then all of a sudden, uh, George Mikan with the hook shot. And just the game continued to move forward. And, 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 and the young players today, with the, 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 the freedom and, and the spirit and the energy they have, it's just so incredible. I think like the, the coaches had so much control during the time that we were on the floor. I mean, they were just sh- shouting and, and <clears throat> excuse me. And if you missed a couple of shots, you know, they had, it was a hook, a short hook, you're going to grab you and, and the, the guys are shooting. And, and if you miss two, then you're looking over your shoulder. <laughs> but, you know, you look yeah. at, uh, uh, Stephon Curry, you know, yeah. he, he missed nine in a row, ten in a row. Keep shooting, keep shooting. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, a lot of good things. There was a difference. Yeah. And uh, this time, and what it was like uh, in, in the early years for me. Yeah. What were some of your, I don't know, biggest lessons or things you learned? playing professional basketball that you have applied outside of the context of basketball itself? Yeah, it's about family, about supporting your neighbor, and uh, understand what it takes to be a citizen and productive in the the, the community. Whatever uh, I heard it, <clears throat> Excuse me. A politician say a long time ago, it takes a village to raise a family, but and that's what it's like. That's what it is yeah. when you expand and when you're able to uh, share some of your accomplishment with the community and uh, and the, the sources around. Yeah, and everybody understands their role and working back. together for a common goal. And, They're and, giving back. Yeah, and then able to extend that even to the communities. Exactly. What What do you think? What do you think the game of basketball did for the progress of your community? Uh, and during those earlier time frame, you know, you're looking back at. Uh, Florida, that in the southern part of the country, uh, it football is a football environment. Mm-hmm. So basketball has always been like secondary. Okay. You know? yeah. So it's really been able become a really nice merger and yeah. very positive yeah. in, in basketball in the South now. Yeah, very much so. It brings a lot of people together. Yeah, from different viewpoints vantage points, context, perspective. Yes. But everybody sits down and yeah. watches the game. Absolutely. Yeah. There's deep respect for it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really gets your attention. 
That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, it's, there's not there's not much more energy than when you're in a basketball environment you know, setting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so the show the show is all about trying to take world class people, people who've performed at the highest level, which obviously you have, and distill as many principles and learnings as we can uh, to to people who are trying. Who, who are on the journey, who, who, who want to get to that next level and, and are fighting their way toward it. What advice would you give maybe to either yourself at 15, 16, 17 years old or somebody listening right now that's at the beginning of their journey and wanting to attain the level of success that you were able to? Well, uh, my, uh, my advice would be no question, it's it's a learning process. Even the, for my for myself today, it's always a continuing learning process. But it's somebody that's uh, a senior and providing some advice. Certainly, you can take it or leave it, whatever uh, whatever your choice would to be under the circumstances. But um, I would share with the, the the young generation today is continue to be supportive. I know I know this a, a number of today's athletes uh, really giving back to the community. Uh, like uh, LeBron James building the school and they have these other and in, in projects they've been able to develop. So I'm that's where I look and, and, and that's the advice, and they already have basically have that right. advice, uh, helping and developing your community. You always find more meaning helping other people than you will by helping yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. No question about it. Ours, this has been awesome. Um, it's a pleasure just to be even sitting with you. I'm a big fan of the game of basketball. I played a ton growing up, and uh, sitting down with people who are pioneers of the game are it's always a pleasure for me, so I really appreciate taking the time. Is there any final piece of advice, any final thing that you want to leave the audience with? There was a, a quote supposedly by Winston Churchill as a really famous, you know, leader of, uh, of uh, England. So uh, he returned to his hometown and he was expecting this really, really great speech and and he, everybody was all excited to listen to what this great speaker was going to share with them. And the words was, never give up, never give up, never give up. And that was it. So that's, that, that's my message to the young people or whomever have a dream. Never give up, never give up, never ever give up. Fantastic way to end this. Artists, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. This is a genuinely pleasure, big, big, big pleasure of mine. So thank you so much. Absolutely.